What's up everybody? I'm Michael Christ, three years running top seller at ShineOn, now head of marketing at ShineOn. And before we get started in today's video, I just wanted to thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. If you like this kind of content, I want you to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I hope you enjoy the video. What's up? How's everybody doing? Give me some love in the chat here. Give me some coffee if you guys are ready for this. How's everybody doing today? Good, I hope. It's Friday. And what's the best way to start your weekend? It's to tune in with Coffee with Michael and get your weekly dose of knowledge bombs on how to succeed with your e-commerce business, selling Shine On products online. You get to sell products you don't have to hold inventory for to customers you've never met using the same distribution channels that are as big as Target and Walmart and Costco for pennies on the dollar. It's an incredible time to be alive, let me tell you. Adrian says he's doing good in St. Petersburg. What's up, Adrian? Good to see you here. Warner's giving me some coffee. I like it. Lindy says, finally, a sunny day. Sunny day. I'm not sure where you're at. I bet it's like the UK or something. Maybe Ireland, where there's no sun. Coffee. Love it. Thanks, Beth. Sharon, what's up? All right. Everybody's awake. David, love it, man. Welcome. Welcome. This is the best part of the week. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. It's the best part of the week. And after this, it's like the weekend, something just kind of clicks into place. The weekend always feels better after one of these, to me anyway. Lindy says she's in the Northwest. Yeah, that was my third guess. <laughs> uh, cheers from Denmark. What's up, Kel? Thanks for joining. We have people probably on every continent except Antarctica, unfortunately. Somebody should buzz on down there just to join so we can kind of do the global circuit here. Check it off the list. Chocolate teas gave me some coffee. Thanks, chocolate teas. Chocolatey. Maybe that's what that is. It's a little play. Facebook user, good afternoon. This would not be... Uh, Coffee with Mike would not be complete without Facebook user. So thank you for joining us. We can begin now. We can begin now because Facebook user is here. Totally is. Love coffee with you and the fam. It's true. Yes, Beth. Glad you're here. And this actually is, uh, I don't know, it's a really cool time every week. The entire community kind of comes together, a lot of us anyway. And uh, I like kind of what we've created here. I'm going to be doing something really soon where I think I'm going to get a whole panel of people that smashed it for Mother's Day. Uh, I'm not sure how many people um, StreamYard will support. That's the software I'm using, but uh, I'm gonna try to get a panel like six, seven, eight, ten 10 sellers. And we're just gonna sit here, answer questions, chit chat. I think that's gonna be awesome. Uh, really love the community vibe we've kind of created here. I don't think this exists, by the way, um, anywhere else, at least in our space. Uh, could be wrong. Sheila, what's up from BC? How you doing? How is it going? Second best, sales come first. Ah, look, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. I want to disagree with you, though, because this is a pretty good time of the week. So welcome to Coffee with Michael. Uh, this is probably going to be the best Coffee with Michael we've had this week, maybe the best one ever. The only way you're going to find out is to stay tuned through the whole thing. But before we get in, right, we're going to be talking about Facebook tips and tricks we're going to be, you're going to be drinking through a fire hose. If you're new to Facebook, this is going to be a really good one for you. Um, you're definitely going to need to watch a replay though. I'm going to be flying through information. There's no possible way you're going to be able to keep up. That's okay. That's by design. You're going to need to go back, watch a replay, go over it slowly. But I promise you, this is like a boot camp. I promise you by the end of this, you'll be Facebook fit, right? And you'll get a good chunk of your learning curve kind of behind you. So you can get in there and start tackling ads. So I'm excited for that. But, but, but before we do, you thought we forgot, didn't you? You thought we forgot our little toast that we were going to do. I can see it now. Some of you are like, what, what about our coffee? What about our toast? Well, we did not forget. This guy didn't forget. So let's kick this thing off to a good start, shall we? Raise up your glasses, mugs, bottles, and flasks, and join me now for the Digital Marketer's Toast. Here's to more conversions, more cash, cheap CPMs, and lower CACs to higher CTRs, 
much higher CVRs to enable the ad accounts and big bank accounts to upsells, downsells, and cross sells, the winning products and repeat sales. And to the thing that everybody knows, the riches are in the niches, but also your email flows. Are you ready? Cheers. Drink up. Ah, yeah, that's some good coffee right there. That's how you kick one of these off with style, with energy. Everybody's brains are getting tuned in now. Little dopamine kick, a little bit of caffeine flowing through your veins. Are you guys ready to learn? All right, let's do it. So I'm going to make this bigger. Look, I'm going to have to apologize in advance because I'm going to move really quick through this. And some of the text on the screen may be a little challenging to read. Again, the replay here is going to be your friend. It's going to be your friend. You're absolutely going to want to go back and watch a replay, especially especially if you're new. Um, in addition, uh, uh, at the end, we're going to have some Q&A. Save your questions, though, kind of until we get to the end, right? When you see my Q&A slide, let them rip. Don't ask quite yet because I'm going to lose them in the chat. So whatever questions you have, kind of hang on to those, and we will get to them. Uh, Root, Rootvik asked if uh, he saw a cricketer on my mug. And the answer is yes, that is a cricketer because I'm drinking from uh, a Starbucks mug I bought from India. Um, I lived in Delhi for two years, believe it or not. And that is where this mug is from. So good observation, good eye for detail. You're going to need that to be a successful digital advertiser, by the way. An eye for detail, right? Okay, let's get into this, shall we? Everybody ready to get into this? Uh, give me some fire in the chat if you're ready to kick this sucker off. Again, we are going to be moving super fast, and um, I, I just want to reiterate because anybody that's new here, uh, you know, we've been talking on these calls before, and I'll see the chat kind of fly up, and people are like, "I'm lost here. I don't get the acronyms or whatever." Well, this this I'm going to try to explain some of that. I'm going to shed some light on a lot of those terms and things like that that we use. But you're absolutely going to have to go back and rewatch this. There's no way you're, if you're new, if you're new, there's no way you're going to retain all this in the first pass. That's okay. That's okay. This is recorded. You can go back. This is your boot camp. Okay. I'm giving you like a course right here. Are we ready? All right. Seeing some love here. Got some fire going on in the chat. Way to be. Werner, Beth, Root, Rootvik. Awesome. Love you guys. Let's get going here. All right. Facebook tips and tricks. Let's get into seller success as we always do. Roshan crossed uh, 10K with Shine On selling on Etsy. Congratulations. The screenshot here shows 6.9K. And then the Shopify store, that's a screenshot from Shopify, 4.5K brings us over 10K. Congratulations. Love to see your success. So happy you're selling with Shine On. Somebody from my team is going to reach out. You got some swag coming your way. Thank you, Roshan. Melissa. Melissa here posted a, a testimonial, did 12,000 in profit, 20,000 in revenue. Congratulations, Melissa. I love it. And uh, she says, shout out to all the e-com moms out there for Mother's Day. We're working hard to go the extra mile for their family. I love that. And happy Mother's Day, by the way, to anybody that uh, was a mom selling with Shine On. We love you people. In fact, Shine On was powered by moms for a very long time. Moms have a very special place in our community. So thank you very much. Hats off to all of you. Um, none of us would be here without you. Think about that. Um, so anyway, congratulations, over 20K in revenue, $12,200 in profit. Amazing job. Somebody from my team is going to reach out. You got some swag coming your way. Whoop, whoop, second sale on Etsy from Lisa Monaco. First of all, I want to say that Etsy is really coming into its own this year. If you're uh, interested in trying out some other selling channels, Etsy is the place to be. Etsy is really kicking off. Highly recommend everybody start experimenting with that. Uh, start figuring out how that works. We've got some information that will be coming out on that very soon. Lisa here did um, second two sales on Etsy. So congratulations. Love it, Lisa. Good work. Kind of thinking outside the box, expanding outside of Facebook. You got some swag coming your way. Then we have, and I apologize, uh, Thira Garajan, um, I think. Apologize on the name. I'm sure I butchered that. 50,000 in sales right here, 50,000 in sales on uh, Shopify. Congratulations, seriously, let's get some golfer claps in there in the chat. Give us those little clap emojis. Um, uh, Thea Garajan totally deserves that. 
Congratulations, 50,000 sales is not easy, but you have cracked the code. There's no doubt in my mind that you're gonna be able to uh, take things to the next level, right? Now you got kind of got figured it out and you got a feel for a winning product, kind of know how this works. It's not that hard to adjust, hit the gas pedal and take things to higher heights. Um, it says he learned from the, uh, from the, I assume these were the Coffee with Michael videos and also from Kirsta. Kirsta is another great uh, contributor here in the community. So congratulations. And uh, we got some love coming in the chat here. Lots of little hands. Digging that. Thank you very much. Congratulations. You got some swag coming your way. All right. Let's get into Facebook do's and don'ts. Do's and don'ts. All right. Take a deep breath. Everybody get out your pen and paper uh, and be ready here. We're going to be drinking through a fire hose. Let's go. Facebook do's and don'ts. So first, we're going to be talking about ad accounts. Keeping your ad accounts kind of safe, right? We know that Facebook is getting more and more strict. Um, it feels like dangerous territory, sometimes advertising on Facebook. Here are some tips and tricks to help you uh, stay out of trouble. So first, with new ad accounts, you want to treat, ad, treat each ad account your business manager very carefully, right? Um, it used to be the case. You could create a business manager, create an ad account, create multiple ad accounts all at once, get pages, get campaigns, get all this stuff kind of going on day one. Those days are kind of long behind us. Facebook looks at that and they go, ah, 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 you know, you don't appear to be... Um, like a new user, right? You don't appear to be following kind of the normal steps that somebody new to the platform would take. They, they don't think it looks entirely authentic and it immediately raises some flags. You want to treat each ad account as it's separate from other ad accounts, right? So <clears throat> maybe you have different payment methods. I'm hearing that recommended a lot. If you can, uh, make sure you have uh, different websites on different ad accounts, things like that. When it comes to your page age, right? If you create a page, you're going to run ads from it. Age your page up to two weeks before running any campaigns, right? So if you create a new page and you're wanting to run ads from it, like niche pages and things like that, really popular around here, you're going to want to age those pages for at least two weeks. Only run ads if the ad account has had a lot of spend history and lots of successful launches. So that's not always possible. I get that. But it's a lot better if you can kind of very, very slowly season that ad account before you really push the pedal to the metal. Um, over here, once you run, start your page, do not, do not immediately run for page likes, right? Do not immediately run campaigns for page lock, likes as soon as you create the page. That's going to get you into hot water. Instead, try to warm that page up organically for two weeks. Put content in there, fill out the about section, make sure there's a profile picture, make sure there's a cover picture. And we're going to have some more tips on that here in a minute. Now, some major admin actions to do. Uh, <clears throat> you want, again, from Facebook's perspective, unless you're an agency or something like that, or you already have a seasoned account, they, they're going to get suspicious if you move too fast through steps. It just looks weird to them, right? For all they know, they could be, you could be an advertiser they banned in the past that created a new profile and is just ripping through all these steps so you can get your campaigns back up. So you have to throttle the steps that you move through here to make it look normal, make it look organic and natural. So you can see here, here's kind of an example for major admin actions to kind of space out. So day one, make an ad account. Just make an ad account. Don't do anything else. Day one, just make your ad account. Day two, go ahead and add a payment method to it on day two. Day three, uh, launch a page like campaign if you already have a page that's like two weeks old, right? This is just an example though. This is not a formula. The idea is you just space out the steps. You make it look like a natural, organic user going through a learning process as they build things out. Um, you don't want to take any major admin actions before the business manager had a chance to develop uh, billing history. So what this means here is, um, again, uh, Facebook is very, uh, they're not very trustworthy of their advertisers. Unfortunately, that is just the case. So you have to gain their trust, right? So before you go adding, uh, making like tons of new niche pages, before you go creating tons and tons of ad accounts, before you go creating new uh, BMs or even adding lots of admins to your BMs, you want to make sure you have a, a sustained kind of billing history with Facebook, right? So that means that you're going to need to have a BM with a single ad, right? And you're going to, or a single ad account, sorry. And you're going to want to have a payment method on there that Facebook has come to trust, right? And you're going to notice too, that when you start spending with Facebook, the increments in which they bill you are really tiny to begin with. In fact, I, I think I've seen them down to like $250, $5 uh, increments. Uh, 
maybe maybe even lower, but they're low, right? And over time, as you build trust, those increments get bigger and bigger and bigger. And now I think we're on nine hundred dollar billing increments. But the idea is we built trust with Facebook, and as they begin to trust you, right, and their algorithm learns you're a safe person that you're going to pay, then you can go create new pages, new BMs. You can add admins, things like that. You don't want to do it too fast. Again, you got to trickle all that stuff in. Next, let's talk about your domain. Uh, it's wise to wait at least two weeks before you register your domain with Facebook. Again, it's just avoiding suspicion here. It looks better to have an aged domain, a domain that's mature, rather than creating a domain and immediately adding it to Facebook. That's immediately going to throw some suspicion up uh, on Facebook. Uh, they, because it looks like your company isn't real. It just pops out of the ether just so you can take advantage of Facebook ads. Um, keep in mind, guys, that what you're doing with Shine On is totally legit. You're actually running, uh, you're actually running like a little e-com business in a box, right? And we sell high quality products. We have great customer service, um, all of that. You don't have to be ashamed of any of that. What Facebook's worried about though are like affiliate marketers, right? They're worried about people running really shady products, running really shady offers and things like that. And that's why most of these rules exist. It's not that um, if you've experienced ads getting shut down or whatever, it's not that you have done anything wrong, right? It's just that Facebook's built this algorithm to catch affiliate marketers and things like that. And sometimes that tags people that are doing things totally legit, totally legit. So, hmm, good stuff. All right. If you do have a policy violation, make sure you appeal the policy violation until you can't anymore. Right. Um, I see a lot of people that get policy violations and just give up. And it, it's surprising to me because you get appeals. And many times if you appeal, you'll get your account back. Now, if you do make an appeal and they reject your appeal, then uh, you shouldn't just appeal again with the same kind of message. Right. You should try to figure out what are they telling you? What is the problem? What do you need to change? If they tell you in the appeal like, hey, they mentioned the Facebook blueprint, for example, um, saying like, hey, that outlines their uh, policies or whatever, it'd probably be a good idea to go take the Facebook blueprint course, then make your appeal again, because Facebook actually tracks that in the back and they know who's taken it and who hasn't. And if you go take it, it shows them you're trying to learn the policy, you're trying to be compliant, you'll be more likely to give you your uh, account back. Um, <clears throat> when you're duplicating content, make sure to alter your image or change a copy so Facebook does not detect uh, duplicate content. This has more to do with things like landing pages and stuff like that. You really don't have anything to worry about it, worry about when it comes to shine on products because uh, the images and things like that will always change every time you upload a new product. I do recommend, you know, get in there, change the ad copy or the product page copy a little bit. Um, I've got uh, tons of uh, uh, content out there about what I do, what I like to do, what I've seen benefit from, but just change it up, alter it just a little bit just so it looks dynamic and it looks real and it doesn't look like a carbon copy all the thing, all the time. Also, you kind of want to do the same thing for ad copy and in some, in some cases. So like if you're duplicating your ads, um, I'm a big duplicator. I duplicate my ads all the freaking time. But usually the way I do it is I create one ad, right? So it creates uh, like I have a campaign, an ad set, and an ad. I create the one ad and then I duplicate uh, the campaign and the ad set, but it still runs to the same ad. So when you go to duplicate a campaign, you're going to get a little pop up in Facebook that asks you, hey, do you want the social proof to carry over to your duplication? You always say yes to that because what happens is Facebook just uses the, the one ad, but it's the campaign and the ad set that gets duplicated. It's not the ad itself that gets duplicated a hundred times. So that's smart. That's good. You wouldn't want to duplicate the ad a bunch because uh, Facebook's really big on fresh content. They like new content. And if you're doing the same thing all the time, they tend to not like that very much. All right. So some basic recommendations. This is all kind of account level stuff. Facebook really wants to see that you're a real business. You have to look like a real business. That's kind of the goal here. Look like a real business. So you need to think through that when you're creating your account and the actions you're taking. Think like, hey, if somebody on the outside is watching me with a suspicious eye, do I look real? Or the actions I'm taking uh, legitimate. Um, if it looks like you pulled the company out of nowhere, you'll get a flag, right? That's what I already said. You should be able to get your account back if no money campaigns have been submitted yet. So all that means is if you haven't spent any money with Facebook and this happens, like if you create a new BM, a new ad account, you launch an ad and then you, you immediately, um, 
like I've done this before where I've, uh, I've created a BM, an ad account and an ad, but I didn't publish the ad. It was sitting in draft and I've had things shut down, right? Well, you can usually get that back. You haven't spent any money yet. You haven't really made any offense. Uh, usually you'll get that back. Um, Facebook changes regularly and is constantly getting more strict, right? So everything we're kind of sharing with you now could change here in the future. Um, uh, you should keep track every time that you get your account banned or something like that. Just make a, at least a mental note of what you did wrong to avoid repeating that in the future. Facebook is not going to like people that are repeat offenders on things. So if you if you do something and you violate one of their policies and you get uh, banned, you're not going to want to repeat that over and over again. That's how you end up losing an account, right? So you're going to want to at least make a mental note of what the error was and make sure you don't uh, do that again in the future. And then finally, when in doubt, act like a real business. That's really the takeaway of the last two pages. Just act, look like a new, a real business. Don't, um, don't look fake, right? That's how you're going to lose your accounts and things like that. All right, let's talk about warming up your pages here. We talked about that a little bit a second ago. Uh, you warm up your pages to prevent Facebook from banning or flagging your account. You can make two pages at the same time. That's fine. But here's the warm up process. Uh, share one post uh, from a random page. You want to do this daily, by the way. So share one post from a random page, right? Go find another page that you really like. Share their post to your page. Put up a random picture with no caption and make two normal page posts with random messages like have a great weekend, everybody, right? That kind of thing. And look, again, don't follow this as a formula. This is like an example. Right. But the idea is you're filling your page with fresh content every single day. It's organic. It looks real. You're sharing from other pages and Facebook comes to learn <laughs> there's a real person behind the page. That's really what you want. Right. That's the goal. And if you do that, you shouldn't have any issues. By the way, all these slides I'll make available for download after this. So you can pull down all these slides and you can come back, read in all this. and You'll have this little cheat sheet uh, to go for it. All right. Let's talk about Facebook ads set up. Now I'm getting into the good stuff. The good stuff. Facebook ad setup. This is the basic structure of your uh, Facebook uh, account, right? So you have your profile, right? And then hanging off each profile, you have business managers. You can have up to two business managers per profile. So you can see business manager one, business manager two. Then off of the business managers, you have Facebook pages. And the, and the pages can be shared among business managers and things like that. This is just here for illustration's sake, but you have Facebook pages. And then off your business manager, you have ad accounts, right? And then inside ad accounts is where you have campaigns, ad sets, and ads. Each business manager can have its own ad accounts, right? Now you can have, um, you can get your accounts kind of penalized at different levels. You can have pages taken down. You can have ad accounts taken down. You can have ads rejected, right? You can have business managers taken down. And eventually you can lose the ability to advertise from your profile. That's actually the worst, right? So you can, you can be penalized in different areas. But this is high level what the account structure looks like. And again, this is for the benefit of a lot of our new people here who are just getting their heads around Facebook. This is kind of what this looks like, right? You have a profile, you create a business manager, off your business manager, you have ad accounts, right? Those ad accounts run ads from pages, right? The pages have to be shared with business managers and I believe ad accounts in order to have access to share them. All right, so let's get into some uh, basic acronyms here. So you have CPMs. This is the, the M here. I'm going to cost per mille, milieu, uh, mille, mille, milieu, milli. Um, it basically means cost per thousand impressions, right? So this is how much you pay Facebook to have 1,000 impressions. Note, this does not necessarily mean you reached 1,000 people, right? Facebook can show some of those impressions to the same people twice, right? This is the cost you pay per thousand impressions. The cost here typically goes up every single year, typically. Um, I actually wonder if this year will be a bit of a wild card because of iOS 14. Typically, it goes up every year, and it's going to vary based on the niche and like who you're advertising to. Some demographics, there's lots of competition, right? One thing you got to remember is Facebook is an auction, right? So every time there's space in the newsfeed for an advertisement, there's an auction, right? And multiple uh, businesses compete for that ad space. Um, and it typically goes to the highest bidder and there's a whole algorithm that kind of goes into how that's decided. <clears throat> um, but some uh, 
demographics have more businesses competing for that space than others. So some demographics are more expensive than others. This is why when people are sharing screenshots in a Facebook group, you should try not to get jealous about the CPMs they pay because there's a good chance they're in a completely different niche than you. And it could be that they're in a niche with less competition. So that's why they have cheaper CPMs. And it could be you're in a niche with more competition uh, and that's why you pay higher CPMs. But as long as you can still make money and your ads are profitable, it's really not that big a deal. All right, next is click-through rate, uh, also known as CTR, CTR, click-through rate. This is basically uh, of, it, it's it's just a calculation based on all the people who saw your ad and how many people clicked. Um, the higher the number, obviously the better. That means you have a, a it's, it's a way to judge um, how effective your creative is, right? How effective your ad is, right? That's click-through rate. ROAS means return on ad spend, right? So this is just a calculation where it's looking at how much you spent versus how much you earned. And there's a calculation in there. Um, I believe it's, uh, uh, I believe to get to the calculation, it's how much you earn divided by how much you spend. I think that's how they do that. Um, so if you spend uh, 10 bucks and you earned 100, then your ROAS would be 10, right? You earn $10 for every $1 you spent. That's how that's calculated. Then you have add to carts, right? Uh, pretty self-explanatory. View content. View content is basically when somebody lands on your page, right? There's a pixel event that fires called view content. You have purchases, self-explanatory, and purchase conversion value. These are all um, data points inside of Facebook Ads Manager you're going to want to be familiar with. Purchase conversion value um, is basically uh, uh, how much money uh, these purchases brought you, right? Facebook collects all that information uh, through the pixel. So um, some basic acronyms for you, especially if you're new, you're gonna wanna set this up inside of Ads Manager. Here are all the columns I like to have inside of Ads Manager, personally. Now, again, you, you're gonna have to come back, download these slides, set up your Ads Manager accordingly. This is basically the order I like to have them in as well. So I'll very quickly run through them. Campaign name delivery, this tells you if the campaign's on or not. CPM, talked about that. Impressions, right? Reach, reach is how many people you reached, whereas impressions are how many times your ad was shown in the newsfeed. There are two different things. Frequency, this is um, how many people saw your ad more than once. Uh, you have unique click-through rate, uh, a link click-through rates. This is if you include a link in your ad. You have unique link clicks, content views, add to carts, checkouts initiated, right? So this is how many people started the checkout process. Purchases, uh, then we have the budget uh, for the campaign, the amount you spent, Bounced up against the budget. Uh, then I have costing. Costing for unique content view, add to cart, checkout, purchase. Now, I purchase conversion value in ROAS. The reason I set it up this way is because it basically is my entire funnel from left to right. And I can just, in Ads Manager, read all these data points left to right and see where I have weak points in my funnel. And I can correct it accordingly. This is how I like to set up Ads Manager. There's no right way. There's no uh, right or wrong way here. Um, but if you're new, it's helpful to go off what... Uh, other successful people are doing. So I invite everybody, go ahead and rip this off, try it out yourself, see how you like it. Um, again, these slides will be available for download. You can come back and get them later. All right, next, let's talk about ABO versus CBO. It's a little bit confusing, especially when you're new. ABO stands for Ad Set Budget Optimization. CBO stands for Campaign Budget Optimization. So here's kind of an illustration to explain the difference. With Ad Set Budget Optimization, you're setting your budget at the Ad Set level. Right, so you can see here, I've set a $10 budget for each of these ad sets, and then each of these ad sets, as you would expect, have $10 in spend. Campaign budget optimization, what it does, you set your budget to campaign level, right? And then uh, what Facebook does is it distributes the budget at the campaign level among the number of available ad sets. And what it'll do is it, look, it will look to see which ad sets are more profitable than others, and then it will self-optimize and, and, and allocate your spend towards the more profitable ones. So you can see down here, I've kind of got an example of how you might see the ad spend distributed using uh, a CBO campaign. You can see ad set number two here has most of the spend, right? Typically with Facebook, that's because it is most profitable, followed by this ad set number three with $7, and then ad set number one with $5. Now I will tell you that Facebook, uh, campaign budget optimization is kind of their baby. Facebook wants to make, uh, uh, Facebook wants to make their advertising platform as easy as possible for people to use. They literally want Joe Schmo, the plumber, 
to be able to pop into Facebook and uh, very easily uh, be able to create an ad that makes him money, that generates him leads, right? Um, so they, they're trying to make this as simple as possible. Facebook for years, for years, guys, has been working towards uh, a system where you're going to, they want you to run fewer campaigns with larger budgets, right? As opposed to lots of campaigns with smaller budgets, okay? They're basically wanting to take all the little hacky stuff we do to make our campaigns really effective. Facebook for years, is they're trying to work that out of the system because they want it to self-optimize and be profitable on its own. They want it to be turnkey, a turnkey advertising platform, right? Now, I will tell you, they're not there. They're not even close. I, I don't know if they'll ever actually get there because real good marketers are always finding an edge. They're always finding a way to use the system, uh, look at how the system's built, and then find ways to kind of get in there and tweak and pull different levels, levers, so they can gain an edge on others in the platform. It's never going to happen. I don't think that's ever going to happen. However, all that said, over the last year, things are constantly changing, and we have seen Facebook favor more and more these campaign budget optimization campaigns. They seem to be more effective than they ever have been in the past. This could change in three months, six months, a year, could totally change. Currently today, we're seeing more impact, more effectiveness out of our CBO campaigns than we really are ABO campaigns. So uh, uh, keep that in mind when you're running your campaigns. And, and don't forget, this changes all the time. It's always changing. Three months from now could be a totally different story. Right now, this is what we're seeing work. All right. Using Facebook's suggested interest. So this is a tip and a trick for you. So I get lots and lots of questions about targeting. One little trick I use when I'm doing targeting that, that not many people know about, it's, 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 it's there, it's pretty basic, but a lot of new people don't know about it. But if you come down to detailed targeting, once you're inside the ad set layer in Facebook, <clears throat> you can actually type in a keyword here in the interest field. You can type in a keyword and then click this little suggestions button right here. And Facebook will actually uh, give you a list of other keywords related to it, other interests related to that one, right? So if I had a product and I was going after the fishing uh, niche or people like fishing or something like that, I could type fishing here and then I could click suggestions and it'd give me all this list, right? And I could add recreational fishing, outdoor recreation, hunting, camping, fishing rod, whatever. I could add whatever to the list. Every time I add a new interest to the list, these suggestions will change based on the stack that I've built. It's really cool. It's really cool. And again, it's it's Facebook trying to be as easy as possible to use, right? They're trying to make it very easy for you to find audiences that you're trying to target, right? Very simple trick, uh, simple tactic, simple hack. Not a lot of people know about, super easy to use. All right, let's talk about uh, actually creating a product now. Um, most people, right? You can see this little graphic I have here. Most people will create a product, okay? Then they try to go find a niche to sell the product to. I actually think this is wrong. This is the wrong way to do it. It's completely upside down. What you should instead do is find a niche, find a market, right? Find a niche, find a market, learn that niche, learn that market, figure out what they want, what makes them buy, what resonates with them, then create the product that they want, right? That's the magic. That's the magic. Most people get this wrong. Start to get this and you'll become a real marketer right here. You'll begin your journey, okay? Find a niche, then create a product that they will buy. Do it that way, not the other way around. This here is a waste of money. If you're creating products and then trying to find a niche, you are, uh, you're setting yourself back. It's gonna take you a very, very long time to catch up to everybody else. You need to do this. Find a niche then create a product that they want right? That's going to require research, hard work on your part. You're going to have to get to know the niche, right? It's very important, very important. But this is how you want to do it. This is how you crack the code right here to profits. When you're running your tests on Facebook, okay? So let's say you got your ads manager set up, you got your account set up, you're all locked and loaded, your, the account's warmed up, right? You've got some billing history now of Facebook. They trust your account and all that stuff. You're ready to run some tests. You, you know your niche. You've created a product. Congratulations. Give yourself a pat on the back. You're ready to run some uh, tests. My recommendation is you run those tests Tuesday through Thursday every week. Tuesday through Thursday every week. Tuesday should be day one, Wednesday day two, Thursday day three. Let it run for those three days. 
Um, I typically like to spend two times my break-even cost per purchase on a test. So if my margin on a product is 40 bucks, 40 bucks, so it's $50 product, $10 base cost, my margin's 40 bucks. That means I can spend up to $40 on ads before I'm break even, right? I'm break even at 40 bucks, $40 and one cent, I'm losing money, okay? So I take $40, it's my break even cost per purchase, multiply that by two, that gives me 80 bucks, 80 bucks. That is my budget for that particular test. And I start my test on Tuesday, I let them run through Thursday. So I'll make a CBO campaign, and I'll give it like a, and this doesn't have to be exact science guys, um, but I'll give it like a $25, $30 budget. Start it on Tuesday, let it run to Thursday, see how it goes. See how it goes, right? Tuesday through Thursday. Now, another reason I'm saying Tuesday through Thursday is that is typically, I've, I've analyzed years, years worth of data um, on Shopify, not only in my own store, but across uh, uh, other stores as well. And I'm telling you, we have massive, massive amounts of data. And Tuesdays through Thursdays are the best days of the week for sales. They're just consistently the best days of the week, year over year over year. So if you want to stack the odds in your favor, you want the best chances of success with your test, these are the days you want to run your test, Tuesdays through Thursdays. All right, let's talk about custom domains here. Should be getting pretty close to our Q&A. So anybody with questions, start thinking about them. Don't post them yet. Get them ready to rock and roll. Once, we see, once you see this QA slide coming up, let them rip. All right, custom domains. So first of all, we've got some steps to set up your custom domains. Here is the link. Uh, how do I get that in the chat? Let me drop that in the chat for everybody. Anybody needs it. Again, these slides will be available for download as well. So you can always come back and get it later. Here's some steps to set up your custom domains. So you got to configure DNS settings, right? We've got some steps and some links to help you out with that. Um, you need to add your custom domain to the platform and then set up your pixel events. One cool thing about the pixel events is I think Facebook recently, very recently, like last week made a change. And now your pixel events uh, are preloaded into Facebook. So you actually don't have to go through some of the steps that we did in the past. We had to like go in and manually fire the pixel. You don't have to do that anymore. So this actually got simpler, simpler in the last week. So set up a custom domain. It's going to be very important, especially with iOS 14. And by the way, um, we do know we're a little backlogged on domains right now. We are working feverishly, feverishly to get that caught up. So just bear with us. Promise you that is coming. Uh, we got the dev team going full blast over here and we will get to it very, very soon. I can promise you. All right. So let's talk about the ad a little bit. <clears throat> so for a successful ad, you need some of the following elements. First of all, I like to call out the demographic, right? So you can see over here in my uh, little example, it's probably a little tiny on your screen. I hope you can read it. Uh, it says, hey, husbands, would your wife love to get this? Grab yours today, save 20 bucks, right? And then I'd have a picture of the actual uh, product itself. So one of the things I like to do in my ad copy, I like to call out the demographic. So in this case, I say, hey, husbands, hey, wives, uh, hey, daughters, right? Hey, grandmothers, grandmas, grandmothers, hey, nanas, things like that. I like to call out the actual demographic I'm speaking to. And then I just like to keep my ad to copy really simple. Say, hey, would your wife, would your daughter, would your husband, would your granddaughter love to get this from you? Would they love to get this from you? And then I say, grab yours today and save 20 bucks. So I like to have an offer in there. I like to have an offer. So it's a call to action paired with an offer right? An offer is just the deal you're giving somebody. It's the incentive you're providing somebody to click your ad, go to your landing page and buy your product, right? So the formula I like to use for all my copy, literally all of it, it's so easy, is AIDA, AIDA, ADA, right? Stands for attention. It's an acronym. It stands for att attention, interest, desire, and action, right? So I like to grab their attention. In this case, I'm saying, hey, husbands, hey, husbands. I like to raise their interest, right? So in this case, it's kind of hard to do in four lines, guys. Uh, not even four lines. But uh, I say, would your wife love to get this? That should immediately spark some kind of curiosity and draw their eye down to the picture. Would your wife love to get this? Well, get what? They look at the picture, right? So get their attention, raise their interest. I try to peak desire, right? Usually this is better done with longer copy and you can do it on your product page. Uh, one of the ways I like to increased desires. I like to say, imagine the look on your wife's face when she opens this, 
Imagine the look on your daughter's face when she opens this. Make your daughter's eyes light up when she opens this. You're giving them a mental image, right, of the effect they want to have with the gift giving. Keep in mind, most new marketers, they're not thinking about that, right? People, um, most new marketers are product focused. They're, they're thinking about the product and that it's gold and it's got cubic zirconia and it, it looks this, looks that. It has a certain weight to it. It's got a warranty. Like they're very hyper-focused on the product. That is, is, is not marketing really at all. People don't, people buy with emotion. They justify with logic, right? Like it's, it's the emotional component that really compels people to buy. They just justify the purchase with logic, right? So what I'm trying to do in my copy is I'm trying to um, give the buyer this, this, I'm trying to make them feel something about the purchase. So I'm trying to give them a mental image, right? Of their daughter, their wife, their son, whatever, opening the product and going, wow, you know? Because that's the experience that they really want. That's really why they're buying it, right? That's really why they're buying it. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do in the copy. Then I have an offer and a call to action. Keep in mind, they really buy due to emotion. They just justify the purchase with logic, right? So I speak to the lizard brain, right? I speak to the monkey brain, part of us. And then what I do is I give them something logical to justify the purchase. I say, you can save 20 bucks. You can save 10%. You can get free shipping, right? I give them some, some logical piece here just to justify the purchase so they can feel good about it. They don't have buyer's remorse or anything like that. And then boom, they're sold. They're sold. This is how I like to do my copy. Now, look, it doesn't have to be this complex, right? This is just how I like to do it. It's how I approach it. It's how I think about it. You're on Facebook, though. You're not going to be able to write three pages worth of copy. I try to boil my AIDA formula down as, as simply as I possibly can. This is about as simple as it possibly gets, right? I did not even, this is three lines. <laughs> it's three lines, right? So that is how I do it. Right. We're also going to talk about UGC. So we did talk about the ad copy here a little bit. We talked about the ad copy. Now we're going to talk about the UGC, right? The image, the ad image. So you need to experiment. Um, I can tell you what I what has worked best for me according to the data, but this literally always changes, and I'll tell you why. So used to be Shine Owns mock-ups, uh, and I'm reaching back to like 2017, were the best mock-ups around. They they worked amazing. Um on Facebook, absolutely amazing. Um, and the mockups still today are the best freaking mockups around. But what we're finding is um, UGC is starting to work better than the mockups, right? And I think that's just because of saturation. Everybody's using the mockups, right? But when it comes to the mockups, the ones I find that work the best typically raise the perceived value of the product the most, right? So the ones where the, the shots are up real close, they're kind of dramatic. Um, the message card is very easy to read. The lighting, there's a sparkle to the lighting. Um, one of the ones that worked really well is the kind of the the um, the one where the the product is kind of diagonal, right? And there's like a black background, and there's kind of light shining down on it, and it it uh, looks really good. And you'll see it um, if you go create a, a love knot or forever love or learn beauty. You'll see this particular mock-up. Look for the one that's kind of black. It's up close. It's real dramatic feeling. It raises the perceived value in the user's mind. But other images that work really well are the UGC images, UGC. And the cool thing about UGC is that it just, it builds trust with the buyer. And it's also, it's right in line with the content that people are typically expecting to see on Facebook. It looks like someone literally just took the picture with their cell phone. Now we have provided a lot of UGC images for you. Um, if you search in the Facebook group, search for Shine On UGC, search for UGC images. We actually have Photoshop files and templates. Um, where you can actually uh, basically put your own products on some of our UGC files that we've created. But this is kind of an example of UGC. I will tell you my highest converting ad of all time. Um, this is the ad I did $92,000 in a single day on. Uh, <clears throat> um, I literally, I'm going to tell you how I took this picture, right? I ordered samples from Shine On. I had a product that was scaling. I was excited about it. I ordered samples from Shine On. Um, they came in the mail. Um, I went out, got the samples out of the mail. I was kind of excited. 
right in the parking lot. It's it's winter time because it was during the Christmas rush. It's like 520. So, you know, in the winter, I'm in Kansas City. So the sun is already going down. It's starting to get dark. The sky is blue. There's a tint that crossed it. Um, you're driving around with your headlights. Like it's that dark. Um, it's, it's dusk. It's dawn. It's dusk. It's dusk. Anyway, I open the item and I literally took a picture of my cell phone. The entire thing is a blue tint in the background, like on the sides of the hand here, you know, in this image, it's all pretty. There are flowers. The background of mine was blacktop. I mean, I took it in a parking lot, guys. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not kidding. My hands, look at my freaking fingernails. I, I'm, I'm, uh, um, uh, I have like a busy anxiety, right? I'm, I'm that kind of person. I have to fiddle when I'm talking and things like that. I got a lot of energy. I pick my fingernails sometimes. My fingernails are all jacked up, right? All that's in the image. That image converted so freaking well, it wasn't even funny. It's unbelievable, right? So now I call it my parking lot shots. Anytime I have a product, I go take pictures in the parking lot just to see how they perform compared to others. And a lot of times they'll be the winner. So you want to use UGC images when you can. They inspire trust in people. They tend to convert better. They stop the scroll. They're unique. They're unusual. Um, they stand out in the newsfeed and so on, right? So UGC images are the way to go. Should be getting really close. Yep. QA slides coming up. If you have any questions, get them fired. Get them ready to rock and roll. We're going to close this down about 10 minutes. We're going to end on time today. All right. Final recommendations. Um, oh, zig when others zag, right? So I mentioned to you that... Um, the mock-ups, we're seeing uh, UGC images convert better than mock-ups. And I said I'd explain why. Well, a lot of it comes to this zigging when others zag thing. The, the news feed uh, gets saturated with ads and with products. And people get used to seeing the same things over and over again. It's very easy for your eyes to just, you, you, it's, it's a very strange thing. Like I sometimes go to CNN.com, just quick browse headlines or whatever. Well, CNN.com is loaded, loaded with advertisements like up at the top and different places. But I swear to you, my eye does not even see any of that. I, I know where the content is. I completely ignore the rest of it. it. It does not even register in my brain. They call it banner blindness, banner blindness. And I think the same thing happens to people in the newsfeed when they're seeing the same type of ads, the same mock-ups over and over and over again. So you need to zig when others zag. Do something a little different. Do something that other people haven't seen before, right? So uh, when I had my $92,000 day, everybody's running with the mock-ups. I ran with unique UGC, right? And I did something um, not a lot of other people were doing. So you want to zig when others zag. If you're seeing lots of products out there with white backgrounds, try black background. Try a background with a solid color. Um, if you're seeing a lot of solid dark colors, try the white backgrounds. Try something with more color that pops. If you're seeing romantic and sentimental type stuff, which I teach uh, all the time because I do still think it's the easiest way to start out, maybe try funny. We're seeing more success with funny these days than we ever have before. If everybody's targeting broad niches, uh, maybe really niche down, get more specific. Zig when others zag, right? That's how you stand out. That's how you stop the scroll in the newsfeed. That's also how you find your corner in the marketplace where you don't have a lot of competitors. And then finally, after everything I just shared with you, especially with your new, you might be overwhelmed, you might get analysis paralysis, uh, you know, you might be worried that you're not doing things the right way, whatever. Um, what I would say is, is keep it simple. Take action. If you're taking action, you're in the right place, right? If you're taking action, you're, you're doing the right thing. Just keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Um, uh, um, so keep it simple. Don't don't overbake it, right? Don't overthink it. Don't let that stop you in your tracks. Just take action. Learn as you go. It, there is a learning curve here. It does take some time to figure out, but the best lessons will be learned from taking action, right? That's how you continue your education here. So I just gave you a big, big crash course that should help you get on the right track. But if you're overwhelmed, I just want you to take a step back, take a deep breath, relax, go one step at a time and just keep moving forward. That is is how you do it. Werner says, there is only one way forward. Totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. Okay, everybody, now we're gonna get to Q&A. Let's see some uh, questions. So there's about a 30 second delay here. Drop your questions in. We're gonna answer questions for about uh, eight minutes or so. I, I need to end on time today. I have a call coming up. Ed says, uh, <clears throat> 
Uh oh. Ed said some great nuggets. Thanks, Ed. Hope you found this helpful. Hope we can be even a small part of your success. Um, Amanda asks, how do you get out of learning phase? Well, uh, you have to let your campaign spend until it's out of learning phase. Um, typically, you're not going to see that until you start to scale. It's very difficult to get out of learning phase when you're testing because you're just not spending enough money. You're not getting enough conversions. Uh, last I checked, you needed 50 conversions in a week to get out of learning phase. Um, so you just you got to spend money and you're typically not going to get there until you really start to scale. Do more seasoned Facebook ad accounts get better rates? Does a seasoned pixel matter much? Uh, yeah, more seasoned ad accounts will get better CPMs for sure. I can't tell you everything that goes into uh, CPM costs, but if you're a trusted advertiser, you pay your bills on time, you have a Facebook trade page that's engaged and trustworthy, you have high feedback scores, of course, Facebook is going to reward you. You're the type of advertiser they want in their platform, right? And they'll reward you with lower CPMs. Uh, that's a great question, by the way. Um, let's see. While running CBO, does pausing the non-performing ad sets kill its optimization? Uh, I cannot remember. I don't think so. But I think killing, pausing the campaign will uh, stop the optimization. Um, changing the budget by more than 20%, 30%, something like that will hurt the optimization. And then any ads and like uh, additional ads or additional ad sets can hurt it. I'm not sure on actually turning them off. I will tell you though, again, most of your good advertisers are gonna find ways around the system. They're gonna find ways to use the system as, the, as it's currently designed, but to their advantage by pulling different levers and tweaking it and things like that. Personally, when I run CBO campaigns, if I have campaigns that aren't firing very well, I'll turn those off and I'll actually load more campaigns into it, maybe to different interests, or uh, sorry, more ad sets into the campaign, maybe with different interests and things like that so that uh, I can try to find new profitable pockets in the audience. Let's see, is it safer to run on Facebook? My own Shopify store, custom domain, shine on. Uh, want the new custom domain, shine on domain. Want the new custom domain, shine on domain. Look brand new and suspicious like you mentioned to Facebook. Well, um, uh, what I'd recommend is register your domain, right? And go ahead and set it up on shine on and run some ads or have some ads created on it and things like that. And then go add it into Facebook. I don't think I have a problem there. Shine on's a trusted domain. It's been around for a long time. We've generated millions and millions and millions of dollars with Facebook traffic. Uh, Facebook knows who we are, right? So I don't think you have to worry about that. Um, so that would be my recommendation. You can also do a Shopify store. I mean, that's safe too, right? They're both safe. Okay, uh, let's see. When you say run the test, you mean PPE engagement test or do you go straight to conversion objective? I always go straight for conversion. Um, I do purchase conversion tests only. Look, everybody's a little different. People have different methods. There's some really low uh, cost testing methods out there that do use some of the other uh, campaign objectives. I just stick to purchase. It works for me. It's easy. Uh, it simplifies my process. That's what I always start with. Purchases are all that matter to me, by the way, at the end of the day. I just want to know if it's profitable. I Guys, I will even sometimes forego looking at something like my click-through rate if the purchases are making sense to me. Right. Obviously, if I'm trying to optimize the campaign, I'll go back and look at some of these other variables. But at the end of the day, right, just hypothetically speaking, at the end of the day, if my click through rates less than one percent, but my campaign's still profitable, I'm letting that sucker run. Right. That doesn't the click through rates not going to stop me from letting that campaign run out. It may encourage me to optimize it to get the click through rate up to see if I can uh, further increase the margins on the campaign. But purchases are really the. Uh, they're like the North Star for me. They're the anchor. They're the data point that I let translate everything else for me and let interpret everything else for me in Ads Manager. All right. <clears throat> Let's see here. I thought you shouldn't say yours in your ad copy because Facebook can kick you off. Okay, look, um, personally, I've never uh, been kicked off of Facebook for using the word you, yours, any of that in ad copy. Now, I've had ads rejected for using you and yours. Now, here's the thing. That doesn't mean using you and yours is actually prohibited. Here's, it, it's confusing. There's this gray area here. What Facebook doesn't want is for people to feel like you're singling them out in the ad. That's what Facebook is trying to avoid. 
right? One of my favorite stories is back in the day, it was like 2012 when Facebook marketing was all fired up. The targeting Facebook provided was insane. It was unparalleled. There's nothing like it in the, in the world. And I remember reading a story about a guy in an apartment building, their friend, it was like their roommate, it was his birthday. And these guys wanted to see if they could get a happy birthday ad to show to this guy. And they were able through Facebook targeting to narrow down their zip code, create like a, a do like geo targeting around like their building. And they were able to choose people that were born in a certain year and they had birthdays. I mean, like they did all this thing and they literally got this ad to show to their friend. Right. Well, that's, you know, that's funny in that case, but that can be really scary if like, you know, you got a stalker or something following you around or whatever. Right. I mean, like Facebook saw the potential for abuse and those kinds of things. And what they really want is they want to provide advertisers with enough targeting capability that they can get their product in front of the right audience. But they don't want the audience to feel like they're being singled out by like very narrow traits and characteristics by the advertiser. So that's why they want you to be a little bit careful with uh, what you put uh, uh, in your ad copy. I hope that clarifies things. Is it okay to run likes for your page? Does Facebook still like it? Yeah, you can run likes for your page. Um, at the beginning of this though, I was saying you should warm your page up first. Let it be around for at least two weeks. Uh, put some organic content on there and things like that. Uh, so Facebook knows it's real. And then you can go ahead and run like campaign to it. Do you run on Instagram as well? As well? Yes, absolutely I do. Um, I usually go with automatic placements uh, at the ad set level. Sometimes I'll do news feeds when I'm testing. I kind of go back and forth on that. But it definitely when I'm scaling, I go with automatic placements. Unless my, my margins are super thin, then I'll really try to optimize the campaign by figuring out which placements make me the most money. All right, everybody. I got maybe a minute or two left. Um, I do have a call here coming soon. <clears throat> um, which which best dates for graduation ads? Uh, so graduation um, runs best uh, probably through the first two weeks of June, but we've seen sales come in all the way through the end of July. Now's a great time, a great time to be testing for graduation. Uh, graduation sales are on an uptick literally every single day. So get on it. Uh, Let's see here. Any news on watches and Etsy integration? They are coming. They are coming. I promise you. Watches are right around the corner. Right around the corner. And by the way, they look stellar. They look amazing. Um, they are super high quality. They're beautiful. Um, so get excited about that. And then the Etsy integration is right on its heels. Okay. All right. One more question, then we're going to wrap this up. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Just trying to find a good one here. I think everybody will benefit from. One Facebook page per niche, like Facebook page fishing, Facebook page engineer. I like to do one Facebook page per niche, but it doesn't have to be that way. Um, Facebook is kind of, if you create too many pages, they get suspicious. You're trying to get around low feedback scores and things like that. Um, so I found that fewer pages keeps you more in Facebook's good side as opposed to more like mini pages. So uh, uh, what I would do is I like to create big, broad pages. So I'll create a page for family and then I'll run my daughter stuff, wife stuff, all that. It also makes building the page easy because I can just run like campaigns to build, like make it massive. And I got one page I can operate all my ads from. So uh, that always works. So, OK, everybody. Hope you found today's Coffee with Michael helpful. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get these slides set up so that you can download them. So come back here in a little while, refresh the post, and you should be able to download the ads. Really appreciate everybody uh, for joining. Werner says I didn't say chicken once. Well, I just did. I just did. Uh, Keld says thank you. You're very welcome, buddy. Glad everybody could join me. Hope you have a great weekend. I know you will because you... Uh, sat through this and we did our little digital marketers toast. There is no better way to go into a weekend. Thank you, everybody. Have a great one. I'll see you next time. 
What's up everybody? Michael Christ here. I want to thank you so much for checking out today's video. Before you leave, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Check out all the links in the description below, particularly the link to register on shineon.com and also the link to our Facebook group where we are constantly sharing marketing tips and tricks to help you take your e-commerce game to the next level. So once again, I hope you enjoyed today's video and we'll see you in the next one.